Welcome to the Crossboard Interview Signature Series. From musicians to painters, from novelists to filmmakers, we're bringing you a diverse range of voices and perspectives, all united by their passion for their craft. And whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to their work, we're confident you will find something to inspire and captivate you in each and every one of their interviews. Our guest today is none other than animator, director, John Delaney. John has been working as an animator director since the mid-1980s and as a comic book penciler since the mid-1990s. His first comic book was for DC's Adventures in the DC Universe. He has since worked on licensing comic books titles like Justice League Adventures for DC and Futurama for BOGO Comics. He is in charge of the chaotic cartoon show for the 4Kids Network. This is Cross Border Interview Signature Series with John Delaney. John, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Calgary Expo, how's it feel to be here? Oh, wonderful. I love uh, Calgary. I've uh, done a couple of these in the past, and uh, nice to be back. So when you're here, what's the common theme that you're hearing from your fans and from across all genres and all uh, entertainment industries that you've worked in? Well, I've been very fortunate to work in a lot of them, but uh, it's mostly Futurama and The Simpsons. That's that's what everybody wants to really see from me here in Calgary. It's funny, when I was just uh, came from one in New Orleans, all I ever got was Justice League. So I was doing tons of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman and that, but here it's, it's all Simpsons, all Futurama all the time. <laughs> so what do you chalk that up to? Just different geographic locations or just the fans that are in the different locations? I think uh, also it depends on how many other artists are doing other things. I'm one of the only guys who does uh, Simpsons and Futurama. So if I'm in a place like this where there's a lot of guys who you know are famous for doing Superman and Batman, I certainly understand why you'd go... Well, I can get some of the original here that I can't get somewhere else. So, and I appreciate that. Also, there's a lot of children, and uh, I find when there's a lot of children, I do a lot of Simpsons and Futurama. So, so the industry has changed dramatically over the last 10, 15 years, even the last five years with the introduction of artificial intelligence. Have you seen, from your standpoint, a massive change over the last few years? Well, I'm very anti-artificial intelligence. But it's coming. <laughs> no, as far as art's concerned, because yeah. it's not artificial intelligence, it's plagiarism. Yeah. And I've actually had some of my own work plagiarized AI. What happens is it, it has the entire um, you know internet to, to take from anything. It'll find a pose of Superman that it really likes. In uh, two, two cases have been mine. And then it polishes up so it looks like it's it's not an original idea. It's just, it just has a nice little painting uh, program in it. So I, I don't, if a, a human being did that, they'd be sued for plagiarism or fraud. Uh, just because the computer does it, everybody says it's okay and oh, this is the thing. The reality is, is it's you're missing out if you move towards that because part of the creative process of what we do here is that collaboration between a writer and, a, and an artist and then an editor and all those things. So if you just punch something in and say do this and it cranks it out, you're not creating anything. You're just using ideas that have already been created. And it's like taking a Xerox or something. You do it enough times, it starts to de degrade and it doesn't become real anymore. And I think it's the greatest part about the creation of comics is that human interaction of, of different uh, writers saying here's what I want and the artists go you know I think I could draw it differently like this and it's a back and forth again if somebody hands me a script and says do this I can type that in and it'll pin punch those out but that's not creativity that's just regurgitation do you find that the next generation of artists like yourself who are about 15, 16, who want to be the next John Delaney, are looking at the the industry going right now going, maybe I don't want to get into it because like you said, there are so many people who are using artificial intelligence to create the next new Futurama or The Simpsons. Well, again, I, I think it's very loosey-goosey to say they're doing that. So what's happening in our industry as far as the, the act, um, live action and film yeah. part of it is... When you go in to do a pitch, or when somebody comes to do you a pitch, say it's a producer or something, they'll often say, um, I'm seeing it like Reservoir Dogs meets Cinderella, or some bizarre you know, a combination of those two things. And so the artist or the writer has to go, okay, cool, I see what you're saying. I'm going to take the edge of, of Reservoir Dogs, I'm going to apply it to Cinderella and that kind of thing. When you type that into AI, it craps out something. And when I use the word crap, that's not unintentional. It craps out some idea. And then they go to a writer and they go, okay, punch this up. That's not fair. It's not fair to the writer and it's not fair to anybody because that's just a program punching out a vague idea and then now the writer actually has to really write it. And that's the hard reality of it is these guys are going to be paid less to do punch-ups than they would to be actually creating something original, which is what they're going to be doing anyway. So it's de desperately unfair and it's desperately unfair to, um, to artists who are spend their entire life uh, honing a craft to get good at something, to get 
um, forward thinking enough to be able to say, uh, this is the concept I'm thinking of, can you design something? And going, yeah, sure, uh, d based on all that knowledge, a little bit of Da Vinci, a little bit of Michelangelo, a little bit of Alex Toth, a little bit of Wally Wood, those are all things, and you apply it and you create something original and new. That's why a, a character like Jericho will look the way that George Perez draws him, and then somebody else will give him you know, a form-fitting outfit. That's the cool part about it. When you take away all that and you say, here's the entire internet to grab something and call it together, it's just regurgitation, you know, there's nothing new about that. So final question, because I know you're, you're a busy man, but uh, what does the future hold for John? Do you have anything in the pipeline coming? Actually, yeah, thanks for asking. I'm working on something right now called Doc Knock, which is an original property. I'm uh, almost finished the entire thing. I was actually this weekend talking to a bunch of different publishers to, uh, to kind of do some of that. I was going to originally publish it myself, but fortunately, uh, the amount of years I've been in this uh, business, uh, some people see value in what I do. So, so uh, I've been approached by a couple of really nice publishers, so uh, hopefully I'll get that out in about the next year. So 2025, we look forward to seeing Cal uh, John back in Calgary with a new project? Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much, John. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. We want to thank Calgary Expo for inviting us and having us for this four-day conference in downtown, beautiful downtown Calgary. This show could not have happened without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed this show and you want to keep up on all the latest signature series that we have coming to you, hit that subscribe button now. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.